It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. The brilliant force positively Yep, Charlemagne the guy. Andrew Schultz. We are the brilliant idiots. And listen, man, today's show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Uh, salute to the good people at BetterHelp. They're really doing God's work. Whatever struggles you are facing, from depression and anxiety to trauma and grief, BetterHelp can connect you with a professional professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions as well as chat and text with your therapist. And anything you share is completely confidential. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Okay, our listeners even get 10% off your first month with the discount code idiots. So why not get started? Simply go to betterhelp.com slash idiots and fill out a questionnaire to get matched with a counselor you'll love today. Also, uh, don't be an idiot. If you've been injured in a car crash or other incident, call Morgan and Morgan. Morgan and Morgan has recovered billions of dollars for thousands of people, and it's free to hire them unless you win. You hear that? You only got to pay them as long as you win. All you got to do is visit forthepeople.com forward slash idiots for a free, no obligation consultation. So if you've been injured, go get your money. Let's start the show, bro. Let's start the show. You got any church announcements? I got some church announcements. Talk to me, Schultz. TheAndrewSchultz.com. Go check it out. All the shows. We're coming out west. Um, Seattle. I think there's a few tickets left for the second show. Uh, then we got Salt Lake City. It probably sold out by the time this is out tomorrow, but I think they said there was like 10 tickets left for the second show. Then we got um, blah, 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 Vancouver and then Edmonton. Edmonton, few tickets left for that show. Go get that. TheAndrewShows.com. We added shows in Minnesota. We're adding Tucson, uh, Hawaii. Uh, Atlanta's all, almost sold out. Alabama. There's a bunch of shows. Go get them right now. I want to um, just tell everybody, go to my YouTube page, youtube.com backslash see to God. I put up an a interview with Rhapsody over the Thanksgiving holidays. You know, I love Rhapsody. I think Rhapsody is the best uh, new rapper of this generation, period. Mm. Uh, forget gender. I'm just talking about period. I think Whoa. she's just she's just that that dope. So I put that up last week. Um, hey, Nyla. Good morning. Well, not good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Nyla Simone. Michaela, yo, I'm too. glad y'all came in here just now, right? Because um, so I got, I want to, I, I, I want to spend some time to talk about my fan club just for a second. Um, I have a fan club, and I'm very proud of my fan club. Ah, yes, my fan club is um the number one most streamed podcast on Spotify. Salute to the Joe Budden podcast. That's my fan club. Right? Ah, why? Why yeah, is yeah, that? Yeah. Why is that a why? They my fan club. Why? Because they were they talking about you a they lot. They talk about me all the time. I love it. I appreciate it. Ah. It's, a, it's a mutual respect. I, I salute Joe. But I don't ever really, uh, you know, question anything Joe says. Like, me and Joe have conversations behind the scenes. But he said something last week that I really um, did not understand because it was just illogical. Okay. And he was talking about the interview I did with, uh, Sir, well, not the interview, the interview that Serge Ibaka did with me on Serge Ibaka's show, uh, How Hungry Are You? Yes. And, you know, I asked Serge Ibaka if his penis was real. You know? Yes. Basically, right? Which I think, for people to be upset about that, I just think that's a double standard. Because these women come in here with fake titties and fake asses. Fake lips. And fake fake lips and everything. And hair. we ask them about it as fair game. Yeah. If women are talking about guys be stuffing their gray sweatpants to make it look like they got more of a bulge. Yes. I think that's a very valid question to ask him if it's all him. Yes. Me, personally. Yeah. You know, I don't think anything of it. Right. right? But Joe said one thing that I totally didn't agree with. He said that... Me mm -hmm. calling women my niece is creepy. Yes, he did. <laughs> he said me. He said me calling women my niece is creepy. Now, Why? I, I had to hit Joe. I said, Joe. Does so, he, does he have a different relationship with his nieces? <laughs> I mean, what about the way you treat your nieces or maybe the way you've been treated by older family members makes you think that that relationship would be anything but loving? That's all I'm saying. And kind. That's what I'm saying. If, if, if Nyla called me Uncle Shala, Michaela called me Uncle Shala, if I call them my niece, it's a term of endearment can't you call your that friend desexualizes your a relationship. But can't you call your friend your brother? Can I call a man my nephew? Yeah, but like yeah. Snoop does it all the time. Yo, what's up, nephew? Yeah. What am I supposed to say if she's Uncle Charlotte? I'm supposed to say, "Hi, cousin." 
Yeah. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to also, say? Joe Budden is Come like, here, what'd you say, Nyla? Joe Budden is, like, not from the South. Like, you're from the South. I'm Boom. from the South. Yeah. And people from the South, like, treat people as family. Yes. Like, everybody's kinfolk, as long as you got that love and, like, love in your heart type energy. Right. But Budden, he's from, like, New York and New York. Jersey. Oh, Jersey. And they just move different. Like the design is play. You got play cousins. This is my yeah, this play, is my uncles, assumption. play aunts. In the islands too, you're supposed yeah, to. You say, in the islands, you're supposed to greet your elders like that's a form of auntie. respect. Calling auntie and uncle. They yes. don't even have to be blood related to you, but you call uncle, them. They can auntie, be your next door neighbor. Yeah, and you call them. Auntie. It's a sign so, of respect. Yeah. So if he made it creepy, that's that's his. That, that's what I'm saying. Is but I've noticed that it's a behavior where like you take your creepiness and you put it out there in the world like. People who who use no homo a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> or pause, right? It's like, how much gay shit is going through your fucking brain that no matter what is said, you immediately jump to the dick in the butt um, situation. Uh, I, 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 Yo, I'm gonna come over to your house, no homo. Were you coming to fuck my ass in my house, or were you just coming for a, a, a place in video games? That's what how I was feel it? about the Sergi Baca thing. If 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 ladies want to know if his dick is real, yes, and I am the journalist I claim to be, yeah. that asks the questions that people want to know. Yeah. Why would I not ask about that man's penis? You asked twice, <laughs> huh? Sure, play it. I thought of some of my best work this year. Yeah, yeah. Play. It. <laughs> I, think it was, I think it was some of my best work this year. Sound like you want some work. <laughs> Do we have it? Defending what though? Okay, but let's get back. Let's get back to this. Okay. My assumption with calling someone your niece or nephew or calling a, your a girl your sister is it desexualizes the relationship. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Right. So what would be f- creepy about desexualizing a relationship with a person that works with you? Bro, it's only creepy. If you think that calling somebody your niece is creepy, then you're the uncle that fucks your niece. That's, I mean, I like, was- Don't project your shit on me, alluding Joe. Alluding to it, but I, 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 you, you could go right there with it. You know what I mean? Well, I'm just saying that's what it sounds yeah. like. And that's what, that's what I told him on the phone. I'm yeah, like, bro, no like- no, no, yo, Joe. No, no, we gonna need Joe to start saying no pedal, no bro. Because why are you having these thoughts? But that's what I, that's what I said to him on the phone, I'm like, bro. That's just that's just illogical. And then Joe was like, because I, oh, I said to Joe, I said, so Snoop them can call guys their nephew, but when I call a woman my niece, yes. that's creepy. I was like, yo, that's some misogynistic, chauvinistic bullshit, Joe. Hmm. And then he told me something about his mom, and then he was like, what are we doing our year year in uh, <laughs> year in review shit? Like, which we'll be doing soon. Huh? Who's that, Serge? Let me Let's not move on from your meat. Let's talk about you in those gray sweatpants. Was that all you? <laughs> That's it. No, didn't you come back again? I don't know. I came, I said it, I said it earlier. I brought up the fact that Sim was talking about uh, his pre- penis printing the gray sweatpants. The moral of the story is you can go to Serve Fresh right now and get the uh, Is That All You t-shirt um, at servefresh.com right now. It's got like the eye emojis with the eggplant. Right. He says, is that all you? So, you know, if you want to go buy one of those, you know, ladies, I think you should get that. I think that is, it is gray sweatpants season. You know what I mean? And, you know, you Can may you? want you may want to ask yeah. guys the question without coming off as a freaking sexual harasser. So wear the t-shirt. Dick talk, dick talk, hey, dick baby. Give me, that. Give me that before you get too crazy. No, you're going to get too crazy with it. You're going to get too crazy I wasn't crazy even talking about it. dick just now. You uh, were talking I about dick. I was talking about dick. That's literally why we're talking about See, this. But because you were talking, talking about, about dick. Now, here's the thing. Can't you talk about dick objectively. <laughs> you talk about dick objectively. objectively. Explain. Like, for example, if you're asking about Serge Ibaka's dick, it doesn't necessarily mean you want to do anything to the dick. I'm asking because the ladies wanted to know. I mean, all jokes aside, did y'all ladies want to know about yo, Serge's yo, yo, dick? Yo, 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 stop, Was stop, Serge's dick stop, not stop. a topic of conversation? I want to know. You don't got to put it Why on you want to know? Dude, if a guy White men has, do have a curiosity about black men's penises. It's not about black men's penises. It's about big dicks or really small dicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah, example, yeah, yeah. like micro dicks we're fascinated Ooh, by. Oh, my God. Yeah. Ugh. Chodes, they're called. They're as wide Ugh. as they are long. It's really sad. I think those people are cursed. Say again? Those people are cursed, bro. But so are the big ones. Nah. Imagine having a dick so big you couldn't put in anything. I'd rather have more than not enough. Yeah, but what are you doing with the big one? It doesn't go all the way in. You just have to like slowly... I'm you know when they take the you. pizza out of the oven, like you don't just throw the whole Schultz, I can't wooden have a, thing in. I can't have a conversation with you about big dicks because I don't have one. What did you want to know? Why did you want to know if it's all his? I wanted to. Because women you, be saying that guys that be stuffing their pants. Why would we do that? Why? Why? Yeah. No, it's some guys that do that. Stuff your wallet. Nah, that, Only it, lesbians it, I thought did that. 
No, great, great, great sweatpants fuck the game up. Like uh, people be doing that. And shit. what is it about gray that makes your dick look so big? It makes no I sense. don't know because it doesn't make mine look big. <laughs> it doesn't. I put on the gray sweatpants and tried. What you know, girls be looking in the mirror like these <laughs> jeans don't make my hips. Do these jeans make my butt look like this? I put on gray sweatpants and like I just don't have it, bro. Yo, since when do girls want to see our dicks? I thought that's a crime. What do you mean? I mean, like taking out your dick. Like girls love these like gray sweatpants and all these memes are popping up all over the place of like they don't want you if to... a girl if a guy wears great sweatpants I'm so thirsty this yeah, that they other. don't want you to Louis C.K. them and just whip out and start jacking off they you know they so they just they like see seeing little... the mound of it I don't, I ask a girl a preview before we waste our time come here what'd you say but I'm gonna Michaela? waste your time no matter what it's all these microphones Michaela talk on the mic start. that's why you're single <laughs> <laughs> you don't know where to put your goddamn lips. Yeah, Talk sure. on the microphone. Yo, that's your niece you're talking to. <laughs> I'm trying to teach her how Yo, to use her maybe, mouth maybe, properly. Maybe Joe is right. Maybe maybe you are a little creepy, bro. Maybe you're a little creepy. Now, what'd you say? I said we just want to preview. You want to see it? Yeah, if you see the print, then you know, like, all right, he might be a grower, shower. You know, so I know if I take him back, if it's a one night stand, it's not going to be a waste of time. Right? Ooh. Is it weird? Okay, do girls look at other girls' tits and compare tits? I look at tits. Right? Well, yeah, but you also like tits. This right. is true. So um, you're not the perfect person to ask this question. <laughs> Who in here don't like titties? That's got a vagina. You don't like tits? You don't look at a girl's tits? Okay. Say what? I look at ass, not titties. Okay, whatever. But you, oh, you look like at ass? another part of a woman's but, body. Yeah. And you're like, I'm comparing my part to their part. But I'm not comparing you. I'll just say, oh, she got a nice ass. I'm not comparing you. Yo, women be sexually pussy? harassing the fuck How out of each other, am I, bro. Why would I look at pussy? No, you never looked at a pussy in a magazine. You're like, oh, that's different than mine. How it's even. What magazine are you? Wait, what uh, magazine? Playboy. Playboy. Penthouse. No. Penthouse. First of all, we're about to be in 2020. Magazine. Who's looking at magazines anymore? We that's got right. whole you got full the internet. porno. Yeah. Okay, so you don't watch the porno. You go, wow, that pussy looks different than mine. Mine, no. Mine is more I'm colors. Looking at the dick. What? I'm looking at the dick. But you have to look at the dick going into yeah, the pussy. But I'm not looking at the I'm looking at the look, dick. Look, I'm going focused into the pussy. on the pussy, but I see the dick going in but it. No, no, you're right. I'm Actually, going, I, have I watched, think that sound she's making doesn't listen, relate to the size of the girl. I have watched porn and be like, that's a natural pussy because I've watched porn. Listen. I've watched porn as a man and but hated on a nigga's it. dick. <laughs> you like, that shit ain't real. You him? Yeah. You're like, that's all that sounds you making, girl. Shut up. That's an extension. I could take that. I'm like, that's special effects and shit. That's not his real dick. Ain't no dick that big in real life. Oh, because it's too big. Yes! Ah. Hated on a nigga's dick. There is a thing as that, though. Would you say you were hating on Serge Ibaka's dick? No. I was not hating on Serge Ibaka's dick. I mean, a little bit. You were like, it must be fake. Yeah. You know what? You might have a good point, <laughs> yeah. Andrew. I'm being honest. I'm, I can be. I, listen, one thing I can feel my feels. Yeah. There might have been some slight jealousy and envy there. You know what I'm saying? But there's nothing I would wrong like with that. To, I would like to have. I would like to throw on some gray sweatpants and see some girls on social media. Like, oh shit! You see Charlotte's print? You know what I mean? Yeah. I would like that. I'm sure you, you would. Who wouldn't want that as a man? Every Halloween, you wear a skin tight costume. We get no comments. None. I actually gotta wear a cup. Cause my shit is one of them little nose you was talking about. What you was talking about? That shit called. So, I actually, I actually got a little chode. I got. A, I thought you said toad, like the little guy from Mario Brothers. So I gotta put a fucking cup on. You know what I'm saying? No, then that's it. Maybe that's a thing. Maybe you do that. What's it called? Uh, you you do a little packing. And then you, uh, and boom, there it's you go. Just, you get all the comments it, you want. Yo, it, I will say this it's like about when girls wear a push up, bro. Yeah, but but can I tell you what guys are doing? Yes. And this is odd. I think guys are getting their dick on medium swole and then taking their pictures. As you should. That's not. I don't see the problem. Ooh, okay. it's a picture, bro. What's the problem? You okay. trying to present That's the best your possible you? That's not your soft dick, though. Your soft dick. It's the internet. Who cares? It's an illusion. Nobody wants to see the soft dick. I don't like seeing my soft dick when I get out the shower. I am embarrassed. Show, I'll never show I am girl. embarrassed by my soft dick when I get out the shower, bro. I'll never show a girl my soft dick. I, I mean, listen, I'm married. So no. it's different. Even my really? girl. Even I, I rub it a little bit before she sees Yo, it. Oh, he's right. He's not lying. I or, do the same Or way. I sleep Wait, on my what? stomach. Listen, he's not lying. What? I'm, I'm not showing you my soft he's dick. Not <laughs> he's not lying. Andrew's not lying. Do you know what I mean? I have so to right have some sex, blood flow. Right what? after sex, y'all put your pants No, right after sex, after I sex got cool. that little gonzo's nose. <laughs> after, sex, you know after, after sex is fine, but I'm going to tell you yeah. why I'm traumatized. When I first started dating my wife back in the day, right? Yeah. And um, this was when we was in high school. And I was going through her closet one time and I found this journal she had. And it had like the few guys she had had sex with. And she literally had their dick sizes 
written next to it, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm looking, I'm looking, okay, I'm like, all right, big, all right, average. Got to me, that shit said small. I'm like, small? No, stop it. Yes! She stop said it, small. bro. You said your dick is seven and a half That's inches. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, how the fuck is my dick small? That's but, not small. But the reason she put that yeah. is because of what she saw after the fact. She saw your soft dick. That's she my, didn't, It wasn't what she go. felt. There you, you fucking go. You got to tell her go. it's what's inside that counts. <laughs> Boom. There you fucking go. That's the point, though. So I'm not even going to sit here and lie. I might be kind of traumatized by that shit, bro. Yeah, you got PTSD from that. Little PTSD. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got pants when I was a kid before I had pubic hair, and then all my friends <laughs> laughed at me. Listen, PTSD. Yeah. PTSD. What would PTSD be? PTSD would be a uh, penis? penis tiny shrivel disorder. Whoa. <laughs> How did you do that that fast? I was excited. I found a penis. I was like, oh, I got the first letter. We're fucking moving right along, aren't we? Chugga, chugga, chugga. Penis, penis tiny, tiny shrivel disorder. Shrivel disorder. Yeah, some men suffer Men suffer from PTSD, which is penis tiny, tiny shrivel, shrivel disorder. disorder. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We don't want women to see our penises when they're tiny. The shrivel, or it could be soft. So it could be the soft, that's going to go interchangeable. It could be shrivel or soft. You know what I'm saying? We don't want that. We want to present our best possible package at all times. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Women are the biggest sexual harassers on the planet. Ooh, talk to me about I was this. At, uh, I, was at, I was at my, can I say sister? I was at my sister's yeah. uh, born day party last night. Your friend. T- Tiffany Haddish. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Happy born day to Tiffany. And uh, she had a black, black mitzvah yes. last night. She had a, yeah. All these women do when they see each other. Mm. Hi! Hey, they, they do each other's titties like this. You. They grab each I other's ass. Yeah. I'm sitting around like, yo, what the fuck? It was one point I had to make a statement because my insecurities were starting to get of the course. best of me. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, of I, course. I, 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 it was Wanda Sykes and yeah. uh, Shantae Wayans and uh, yeah. a couple other people. And I said to myself, yeah, I got to watch my girl in here, yo, because every fucking woman in here is trying to hit on her. Which one is... Your girl, your wife. My wife. Okay, okay. Just it's like, sure. yeah, every fucking yeah. lesbian in here. It was going after her. It was her. wild. Shooting their shot. Wow. They got, the <laughs> they got the strap. They got the strap ready. Okay? <laughs> Dick tucks. And they all just kept telling me, your wife is so beautiful. Oh, no, 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 no. And they're ready to <laughs> sit there and listen. Yes. You know what I mean? You haven't listened to your wife talk about her day for fucking years. There's all these comedians they're all making her laugh. Oh, fuck what the that. fuck? They ain't that nah, funny. Nah, I don't play that <laughs> shit. I don't, hey, don't make my girl laugh, yo. <laughs> hey, don't do that shit. Uh-uh. I go real fucking Saudi Arabia when that shit happens, bro. Bro, insecurity is a motherfucker, oh, yeah. bro. Like, that shit can't set That's in disrespectful. at the worst possible times when you're not even, you just like, what the fuck? Fuck. No, no, they start cracking your girl that? up and all that kind of <laughs> shit. And you're like, what is that? That's and not even funny. And they feeling on her. What? I mean, it's women. Oh, yo, the female comedians. Yes. Ah, that's right. I wasn't worried about no guys in there. It's the, it's the, it's, it was a room full of goddamn women who eat pussy better than me. Yo. Hmm? They might. It's not a might. You think they definitely do? Absolutely. I don't know if I believe in that because men are Absolutely. usually better than women at physical activities. Mikhail, come here. No. You've had your pussy eaten by both. Come here. Yeah, let's. But I want us. I want an honest, honest answer. answer. Be honest. honest answer. Who's better? Because I have a theory that it's men. That's I don't, my I, theory. I don't think so. Be honest. It's women. Easy. But 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 but, but why? Because we know our body. Easy. But wouldn't you rather get your pussy eat after a dinner was paid for? <laughs> like, doesn't that feel better? <laughs> Say what? A woman can't. Pay I mean, y'all dinner. can. But do you? Every now and again. Uh, 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 what was that sound? <laughs> Every now and again. What was the last girl who took you out to eat and took you out to dinner? Yeah, I'm the payer. Oh, you pay? Yeah. Why? Uh, I'm like the... That has nothing to do with my height. She said... I'm just, you see height. that? I'm the more dominant one. I'm the, I'm the dominant one. So you strap? No, I don't participate in any of those. So activities. you guys just scissor? You don't fuck with the strap, Michaela? I don't have Hold a on. strap. Can... Do you strap or do you scissor? How does it work? Um, and when you scissor, do you guys suction we, together? Like, do you have to cuddle. go... I'm the big spoon. You're yeah. the what? I'm the big spoon. We just cuddle. By the way, I call Michaela my nephew. I just want y'all to know that. <laughs> I thought Ma- I was going to come Michaela throwing some great pants. She got a print, too. You be like, what the fuck, Serge? Serge, Michaela? You be like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I actually call her my nephew. That's a, that is a fact. That is a fact. Really? Yeah, he does. You like that? No. Why not? 
Actually, you told me Happy Thanksgiving, nephew. <laughs> I texted him. I told him Happy Thanksgiving. Yo, I said, I'm so up. grateful for you. I'm thankful for you. Yeah. He said, like, uh, Happy Thanksgiving, nephew. Wow. Exclamation point. He <laughs> put you on the nephew <laughs> group text. That's <laughs> fucked up, Very man. sentimental. It's great. Um, yeah. <laughs> Women. Women, definitely. Yeah. By far. Yeah, it's, men, it's, are, it's, men are really selfish when it comes to sex. And they don't know, they don't know. How have you ever had your pussy eaten by like a Puerto Rican guy with small feet? <laughs> what? I'm, I'm, what? Nobody knows what? a clitoris like a woman does. Puerto, they have Puerto one. Puerto Ricans are pretty good at that. Nah, they have one. Like the only person that could probably even remotely eat pussy as good as a motherfucking woman is a, a, a person who specializes in sucking on them little micro dicks. You got to stay in the same I don't position. Think it's about, I don't think it's about the running, I don't think it's about the head <laughs> movement like that. What? I, don't, I think it's about just like keeping that tongue steady and firm. But either way, you just can't do it the way a woman do it. A woman, man, a woman is putting emotion into her eating. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm not saying that I don't put emotion into it, but women are like just very in tune with their emotions I'm in a different way. Counting down the time until we can fuck the whole th like I oh, nah. yeah, dude. I'm not. I'm not enthusiastic nah, about it. Yeah, I take pride I'm in not. It. You basically white people, white guys are good. They say white guys are good at going down. We're better than like Jamaicans. <laughs> I mean, Jamaicans don't do it. Well, that's I why take, we're better. I, I, I take, I take, <laughs> that's, that's how you become better. <laughs> I take I take pride in it simply because, like, um, like I like to see how many times I play games in my head. Like, I wonder how many times can I make her come right. by just eating her. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So you eat her, you make her squirt one time. Yeah, then you start doing some other foreplay, then you get back to it, just do it again. Right. You know what I mean? Plus, I'm just prolonging it as long as I can because I know I'm a nut in two minutes anyway. <laughs> ah, so you, know you what I'm saying? So you come fast. Yeah, That's the thing. You know? So you'll make up for it with That's mouth it. play. That's it. See, I don't come fast. Really? I can fuck. Okay, I can it. fuck. I can fuck. <laughs> I can fuck. I'm good at breathing. I have good breathing techniques. Let me tell you something. This big old nose can control my breathing real well. Okay? When it's about no, when it's about to go down, when I'm about to nut, you see me go like and my girl laughs now when she when she hears so it. But when my when I'm about to nut, I just start going like this. I go. <laughs> <laughs> and my girl starts giggling, but that makes her pussy get all tight. So it, it is actually worse. Because you know you do Kegels when you laugh. Yeah. Even saying the word Kegels apparently makes women do Kegels. Yeah. Kegels? Kegels. Kegels? I heard it. <laughs> I heard it. I heard it. Heard it. <laughs> so yeah, but the the eating pussy. Eh, I've never I've never been like one of those guys be out there for like half an hour. Like who is that fucking time? What are we doing with this? There she go. Hey. Come here. Let me put her on the spot real quick. Come on in. <laughs> Say hi to Andrew. Hey, hey. How are you? Good. Hi everyone. Uh, uh, your sister put you on blast. She did. She told him. She said that. She said you, you had a crush on you me. Dated you dated Andrew in your mind for a week. A hits. week, and then it just didn't work out. You know what I'm saying? Apparently, yeah. Apparently, you came to my show, and then that was it. That's what your sister said. I went to your show. I was like, mm -hmm. oh my god, and then that. How do you date somebody over. in your mind? Oh my god, you just create these illusions. I can't you believe I'm what? saying this. Uh, <laughs> sick. Okay, I don't date nobody go. in my mind. You like, how you yeah, Patty. And... Girl, I'm a happily married man. Black men don't cheat even oh, in the please. mind. <laughs> Yeah, you just I a little crush. Yeah. Like don't get don't let it get to your head. Uh -huh. Um but yeah, we had a great time. Wow. When we dated in my head. Why and you what, never hit me to hook y'all up. What we do though, what we do. We did everything you can think of. It was really good. You could have hit me out of put out of put you all on group text. No. <laughs> well, I was DMing him already, so Oh shit. You never hit her back so <laughs> oh, shit, you no. left her on unread? No, I think I hit you back. No, he I... did. He hit me up and then I was like, dude, what are you doing? Now, come on. Why do women do that? You DM'd him, then when he hits you back, you ask him what he's doing? No, no. Like, this is... I was telling myself, like, what are you doing? Oh. Like, what are you... you what's know? wrong with Andrew? There's nothing... Hey, what's wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with Andrew. <laughs> huh? That's Lulu. It's me, Lulu, yeah. <laughs> yes. But, um... So, so what happened? What what made us break up in your head? I know we weren't together, but what made us break up you in know, your head? You know, you were traveling a lot. I I'm needed on the my road. Time. I'm okay. on the road. And yeah. So, you know, I you need just someone need... there for you. Yeah, TLC. You know, yeah. tender love and care. And this so, is weird. This is that makes social media error. <laughs> no, but this is true. Women need that. Yeah. But this is like y'all could have actually had a conversation. You could have met Andrew in real life. You didn't have to have this imaginary thing is, relationship. That's a good Andrew's point, too. Andrew's my ex-boyfriend's name, so I was kind of like, that's Oh, you're weird. conflicted oh. about that. Conflicted, yeah. Oh, right, right. Trauma. Yeah, you got yeah. trauma from the name Andrew. Trauma. You got, got that you, PTSD. Got you. Do you know uh -huh. what PTSD stands for? <laughs> I'm afraid to ask. What does it stand for? Penis again? tiny shrivel disorder. Yeah. That wasn't the case with my ex. 
זה תקיס ותהיה? תהיה לי סאמבורד! תהיה לי סאמבורד! תהיה לי סאמבורד! הולד און! 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 הולד Oh, dick talk. Oh, uh, dick talk? <laughs> dick <second. laughs> Listen. <laughs> One day we're going to get these goddamn sound effects right. But that's um, Lulu. Lulu hosts a show uh, on KTU yeah. from uh, six, seven, to midnight. seven to midnight with her twin sister, Lala. Yes. Oh. Yes. Lala is, I don't know where she is, but. She just came in and said hi. Yeah. She just came in and embarrassed you. And then you, told you it. everything. <laughs> yeah. But I'm glad you came in and straightened everything out. How I was did. the breakup? How did I handle it? We handled it. well you were kind of like all right i guess yeah, and i yeah. was like whatever i'm all right already but i accept it because i want what's best for you right i'm sure you if you're not happy we're not happy you know exactly yeah, so yeah. there it was a happy breakup there that's you what's go. up we're friends now yeah in this, your head this is uh <laughs> yeah this is um this is strange this is very strange for y'all to have a whole relationship going on in your mind yeah charlotte man i got to be a man of the people what'd you say you could be a man of the industry or a man of the people that's right you you gotta, yeah, i'm with you i'm, I'm a man of the people you. But, uh, i'm definitely with you <laughs> thank so, you for the good times thank you're you welcome. lulu you're all right welcome. Love. thank you for clearing that up <laughs> I'm hope, I hope you got the closure you always wanted. I did get the closure. Okay, good. But, 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 right. Do you feel good about this decision? <laughs> I think I she's back in, in, dude. I think she's back in. I think she's back dating you in her mind just a little bit. So, she's in her, she's saying her stuff. I'm going to give him another so. chance. She's blushing, bro. Give me the board. Give me the fucking board. We're back to the board, Charla. I'm going to have some shit. Go on. Keep going. You want to date him for real? No, I mean... No, I that wasn't the nice real guy. no. That was the no, yes. You know That's what I think? Was. You know what I think she wants to ask, Charlotte? Uh, Let's not move on from your meat. Let's talk about you in those gray sweatpants. <laughs> Is that all you? <laughs> Thank you, Lulu. Thank you, guys. Bye, right. Lulu. Thank Bye. you. You know what? I, I do want to um, I do want to salute Joe Budden, though. Okay. And the reason I want to salute Joe Budden is because he is the number one... streamed podcast on Spotify. Yep. Uh, I don't know exactly what that means number-wise, but I know that there's 500,000 other podcasts on Spotify. Yes. Uh, Spotify specializes in a lot of the scripted podcasts, which are very big. You know, those very scripted, popular. Those scripted podcasts turn into TVs, they turn into films. So for a man from the hip-hop culture... who comes on that show every week, discusses hip-hop culture, just conversation. For him to be the number one most screamed, I think that's a big deal. I'm a businessman. I think it's good for business. I don't think people realize that when those screaming services see something like that win mm. <clears throat> in that way, all these other screaming services are going to want to duplicate that type of success. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So when somebody like that wins, that's a huge win for the culture. So for anybody out there who has, you know... A podcast that they've been doing for I would say the past three to four years I think a lot of you newcomers are gonna have it a little a little a little bit harder yeah. but if you've been doing it for the past three four maybe five years maybe even longer and you're really established in that space mm -hmm. a lot of these companies are gonna be coming to partner up with y'all uh really soon. Especially after seeing the success of the Joe Budden podcast. Yes. So I hope you got the right you know team around you agents, managers, whoever that can You know, help you situate your partnership in the right way. And the reason I keep saying partnership, because you would be a fool to sign up as just talent. You know what I mean? Because you've built, you know, your, 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 you've built your podcast from the ground up. You own your podcast. You own this content. They're basically really just paying you, you know, a, a licensing fee. Correct. You know what I mean? That's really what they're doing. They're just paying Correct. you to license your content. So I would hope that you wouldn't just give your content away. I hope that you would go out and establish these partnerships. I'll stay independent, whatever you want to do. I just like when I see, you know, uh, that that number that, that Joe Budden had is the number one on Spotify because it's it's good for the overall game. Yes, it is. I Absolutely. So. It, is, it is good. Um, and I agree with you about partnering up once you have... Once you have the numbers, once you have the people, you have to partner up. There's not even a question. Mm -hmm. Because there was a time where the people were limited by your cable box or your radio station. The mm -hmm. only way they could get content would be if they listened to the radio or they watched some TV. Mm -hmm. And now you can give the people the content however you want. You can give Absolutely. it to them on a podcast. So you are migrating those people. To their platform. Absolutely. They're doing one of the three things necessary for content. It's creation, platform, and people, right? They're only doing platform. 
Mm-hmm. So you need to get paid for the other two. Back in Absolutely. the day, we would just have to do one, which Absolutely. was create, and, and they would handle the others. And the platform needs to pay to continue to market and promote you. 100%. You know what I'm saying? But that's in their best interest, too. That's in their best interest. But as long Absolutely. as there's a partnership, I mean, that's what happened. The second I started having, like, people, the second I started having people that supported what I do, I wanted every single deal that I did to be a partnership. Of course. Why would you do it any other way when you've built your own shit? You know what it is? It's because <clears throat> we're a little bit older, so we're grandfathered in, you yeah, know, yeah, to, yeah, like, yeah, an yeah, old yeah. thinking sometimes. And I think sometimes we go, oh, here's a paycheck that's a lot. I got paychecks my whole time in entertainment. Why would I not take another paycheck? That makes mm-hmm. perfect sense. And then you see these numbers, you're like, whoa, this is really impressive. That being said, sometimes that paycheck, that one-time paycheck, doesn't come close to the equity that you have when you actually own something. Yeah, I look at it as real estate. You know what I'm saying? Like I was um, yeah. I was home this weekend in downtown Charleston. And, you know, uh, I love downtown Charleston. I used to go to... Um, I remember elementary school. My mom used to teach at Courtney. But I remember back in the day when downtown Charleston was just like this... This hood and this ghetto, but now it's just like it's beautiful. Now the Charleston is like one of the number one tourist attractions in America. And I was standing outside of my gentrification. My, gentrification. But I was standing outside of my man spot. It's called um uh bourbon and bubbles. A uh, bubbles and bourbon. I don't remember, but it's it's a, it's a black owned facility. Champagne and whiskey. No, that, no? that's no. the bourbon and the bourbon bubbles. And bubbles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so we were standing outside because it's black owned, and it was this building across the street, and it's got graffiti on it and all kind of shit. And I'm like. I'm well, buying it. I'm going to buy that shit. So yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm looking at everything around it. Like it's this new student housing project and my man got a Mexican restaurant and he got the bourbons and bubbles. He's building a sports bar. And I'm, I'm like, how much is that? It was like $10 million. Oh, times have changed. <laughs> it was like, what? Times have changed. <laughs> and it was like $10 million. But they were saying how these older people that live in these areas, yeah. right? They get older. They want to just, you know, they, they, they don't know they're about to die. You go to them with a hundred thousand, one hundred fifty thousand dollar check. They take it. Or if they do leave it to the kids, the kids don't know what to do with it. So mm. the kids get this hundred and fifty thousand, two hundred thousand dollars. They go buy a house in the country somewhere. Meanwhile, this property is worth millions right. of fucking dollars. Yeah. Or you could have just kept the land and fucking sold it commercially and fucking had a lease for the next 15, 30 years, making ten grand a month, whatever for thirty years, whatever. Yeah. But my point is, they took that one time check. Because it was the biggest check they've ever seen in their life. Yeah. And they didn't realize the equity that they had in this motherfucking property. And it's the same thing in the podcast space. You don't realize the equity that you have. Like, Brilliant Idiots is an independent podcast. Yes. And it's been an independent podcast for a long time. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Loudspeakers Network is an independent company. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, so it's just like, we're just, we're just, uh, the word that I want to use is in my mind, but I can't remember. It's something, my our bets. What is it? Hedging our bets. Is it hedging or chiding? I don't know what chiding means, so okay. I think it's hedging. Well, yes, we, we're just we're just patiently waiting. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. And I it's mean, not like it's not like the people aren't knocking and all of these things like that. You just we just got to take the best opportunity and be willing to walk away, like because that's the thing is like when you're doing exceptionally well, you have nothing to lose. You have, have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose. We're not in a rush. We're just not. In a, we're just not in a rush. We're, we're winning already. This is what we want. Yes. I want a studio. But outside of the studio, I want a consistent That can be in a deal. That can be negotiated, I mean, baby. We can do it ourselves. Damn. You know I like spending mean? other people's money. I'm going to be honest with you. I like spending mine, but I'm not good with I money. I don't like spending my money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You say yeah. you're not good with money. <laughs> yeah. Well, stop spending your own. I well, got to worry about that. Let me give you one good financial tip, okay? Because I invest in myself, man, <laughs> and it's worked out so far. So I'm like, I'll just do it. Let's talk about equity. Okay. Talk about cultural, you know, cachet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of times you don't have to spend your own money because you're you. Meaning that you have a voice. You have a platform. Why do you have to invest in yourself when you are your own investment? So let these people spend the money investing in you because your investment is this, being able to talk and promote and get things out. Like if I wanted to invest in like, say a company or, you know, anything, I'm not going to necessarily just reach into my pockets. Because you know why? They know that I can help them promote whatever the business is that they're doing. Right. Why would I give them money equity? Yeah. When they can just give me a percentage of the company and I just... Right. But then do you get to do whatever you want with that? And are you on your own terms with the creation? Why would I? And then, well, once people invest in a company, they have a say, they have a deadline, they have yeah, a I want the same. Like. I want the same. And it's, it's, an investment is an investment, whether it's money or not. Yeah. If you put me down as a, a owner of something and a partner, and I want creative... 
control. Con- input. I'm not going to yeah. say control because it's, right. it's a partnership. I want creative input. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. So, yeah. I think there's certain things that are like really good to have help and investment in. And I think there's certain things that are good to like put your own money up for as well. You know? Depends what it, it just, is. Yeah, it just depends. I want you though. I'm, I can, listen, I can go either way with it. Right. You know what I'm saying? I can go either way. I have no problem investing my own money, but I would much rather spend somebody else's. Yeah. That's just the truth to the matter. Yeah, I mean, that's a smart thing to do. That's what anybody who's good with money will say. Like, don't spend your own money, but... I've seen too many people go broke. Yeah. Spending too much of their own money. Yeah. Betting on their self. Yeah. Betting on yourself does not always mean that you got to spend your own money. Betting yeah. on yourself is sometimes just getting involved with something and using your cultural cachet, using your 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 sweat equity yeah. to help grow something as opposed to using your financial equity. Yeah. Simple as that. Yeah. Now, speaking of financial equity, let's pay some goddamn bills. <laughs> All right. Postmates, uh, other than your absolute best friends, who could you ask to bring you red wine at 4 p.m.? Taylor, you got anybody that could bring you red wine at 4 p.m.? Nope, because you're single. Uh, what about sushi at 9 p.m.? Michaela, you got anybody to bring you sushi at 9 p.m.? Nope, because you're single. Uh, what about a breakfast burrito at 8 a.m.? Maybe because you're at work and your Uncle Charlo will get it for you via Postmates, all right? Postmates is your personal food delivery, grocery delivery, whatever you can think of delivery service all year round. No more trips to the store. You don't even have to know where the store is. Postmates will deliver anything to you, okay? Download the app for iOS or Android for free. Browse local restaurants and businesses and track your delivery 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Postmates will bring you what you want within the hour, okay? Anything you're craving, Postmates can deliver. They're the largest on-demand network in the known universe with more than 25,000 partner merchants. For a limited time, Postmates is giving our listeners $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days to start your free deliveries. Download the app right now and use code IDIOTS. That's code IDIOTS for $100 of free delivery credit for your first seven days when you download the Postmates app. Get anything you need, anytime you need it. Download Postmates and save with code IDIOTS. Idiots. You might as well do the other one, Schultz. Let's do it, man, because it's officially the holidays and no party is complete without getting your ultra festive holiday clothing from Tipsy Elves. We got it right here. Okay. Okay. Tipsy Elves is a one-stop shop for all your holiday clothing needs. They sell one-of-a-kind Christmas sweaters, dresses, family pajamas, and onesies. Um, Why can't we have a black Jesus and a white Santa or a black Santa and a white Jesus? Why do they both have to be white? Black Santa would never live in the North Pole. Okay. He might wear a North Pole jacket. I don't like it. And, and, <laughs> and, and, oh, this is funny. Send nudes. Send nudes with another white Santa. And that's that's sexual harassment. Yeah. They're not even, the, the tipsy elves is not, well, they're drunk. They're drunk elves. So that's why they're talking like that. They're still acting like it's the goddamn 90s asking <laughs> girls to send naked pictures. You know what? I think I think white Santa makes sense. Tell me why. Because do you want to be responsible as a black man? <laughs> everything <laughs> everything as, as a black man. Everything I don't even think you guys know where I'm going with this. As a black man, hi, hi girl. As a black man, do you want to be responsible? I get where you're going. No. If there was a black man breaking in people's houses on one night. Oh, forget he'd it. He'd be He's a dead. fucking criminal. He's dead. He'd be on America's Most Wanted. 100%. Yes. Okay. That being said, also, do, as a black man, do you want to be responsible to have a slave army of, midg- of midgets making all this stuff? No, you don't. I was actually wondering, could you call midgets elves? Is elves a more politically correct way? Because people love elves, right? Like, no, seriously, they respect elves. I was question. really, when we, I was going to have this conversation after you finished the ad. That's a good question. Could you call yeah. midgets elves and would they be offended? Dwarfs? Dwarfs? Yeah. Oh, and I think dwarfs, I think Snow White. I think Snow White. I called one a minion once and he didn't like that at all. And, uh,. <laughs> I can see why. I can yeah, see why yeah, 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 yeah. Minions was, are cute though. Despicable Minions. That's what I told him. I was like, "You're, you're an adorable little minion." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, and he fucking yeah, he was, he was upset. They should not yeah. be upset about Elf. Say again. And if they do get upset about Elf, then what do you call them? You call them Santa's little helpers. <laughs> they might be Jewish. What does that mean? Well, they wouldn't help Santa. Jewish people don't fuck with Santa. No. <laughs> Did you pay attention? <laughs> what, to, what? For the Haddish's thing, they have Hanukkah. 
<laughs> Did we finish this uh, tiny midget out? Okay. Tipsy so, midget ad? Anyway, from drinking game sweaters to tacky tinsel lights, tipsy elves, hilarious sweaters will have everyone at the party laughing. They're a one of a kind, seriously high quality and crazy comfortable too. I'm telling you, these tipsy elves, okay? Yes. Best holiday sweaters that you could possibly get. Tipsy elves, we would like some black Santa That's Claus. That's it. It's a little diversity. They're going to think it's Rick Ross. That's fine. <laughs> it's a fictional fucking character anyway. Why can't we have goddamn Santa so Claus? Rick Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't we have a black Santa? We do need black Santa. Yes. We do need black Santa. Come on. We do need black Santa to come down the chimney. And let, by the way, if he looks like Rick Ross, great. Yeah. And let's be clear. White Santa comes down the chimney. He comes out black Santa anyway. That's if it was true. Realistic. Okay. That's a good, no, that's a good point. Black face. <laughs> like, like Santa got on black face. Dude, the let's do it. Santa? Um, anyway. Uh, post make, nope, see. Okay, so. Uh, you sound like a tipsy elf, bro. Yeah, I think I, I think I got a little reading it. They're one of a kind, seriously high quality, crazy comfortable. Okay. That's right. Go to tipsyelves.com slash idiots now to get 20% off your entire order. That's tipsyelves.com slash idiots for 20% off today. Uh, Lulu would like a picture with her ex. No, that's not what he said. That's, that's what I the forget. fuck you just told me, Lulu. <laughs> Lulu I said, you, Lulu texted me and said, and I want a picture. LOL. I didn't Guys. see the LOL. Guys. <laughs> yes, you did. I did not see the LOL. You got to do what I got to do. <laughs> like, I'm the man of the people. You know what I mean? I'm the man of the people out here. Come on, guys. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to get up in this picture. Do you mind? Yeah. Should I square off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think y'all should date for real. I have a girlfriend. Has a girl. I have a whole girlfriend. <laughs> a whole girlfriend. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank I you like guys. to hear men talking like that. <laughs> Say again? I like to hear men talking like that. I like when a beautiful woman comes in the room and a yeah, guy goes, I have a girlfriend. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> Longtime listeners of this podcast will remember. You've always been faithful. No, that's a fact. Andrew Schultz has always... Been a faithful human. I used to always say, "It's two people I know that are faithful for real, and that's Paul Ritchie and Andrew Schultz." Yeah. No. Are white people more faithful than black people? No. Are, sorry, are white men. Of to course. Get on the microphone. What you say? Are white men more faithful than black men? No. Definitely. We invented no, we, faithful we, before you did this whole little spiel. No. You don't. You never thought so. White men would rape black women while they were married. That's not faithful. Wait. What? What? Slave days. We're not talking about slaves right Hold on. now. They were letting <laughs> slaves get married. <laughs> no. no, they were slave weddings. They would sexually assault their slaves while their wives were in the house doing something else. Oh, that's not faithfulness. That. I'm talking about like you're saying, saying they would cheat age. on their wife with, with a slave. Yes, got you. Boom. I'm not that's about you, yeah, but how many? What percentage of of uh, whites had slaves? All, All of them. Five percent. All of them. Two and a half to five percent. All of them. So that's ninety-five to ninety-seven point five percent of white males nope. I'm not in America. You, I'm not gonna let you faithful. Tell, I'm not gonna let you talk those faithful. facts. Faithful. <laughs> Every faithful. white person in America had white slaves. Men. <laughs> Don't <laughs> cheat. <laughs> All I know is I just like seeing men being faithful. I think it's a beautiful thing. I Yo, think a lot of but men. But who do you are think is more up. faithful? Okay, let's let's uh, mm -hmm. let's remove white and black. Okay, okay, let's just go down the hierarchy. Gotcha. Least faithful, go. Least faithful is uh broke people. What? Facts. Broke people. I'm talking about by race. You just said no race. <laughs> no black and white. No, We're taking out of it. No, no, we take black and white out of it, and then we just use you know everyone else. Dominican. Oh, Latinos, definitely, Dominican. definitely at least faithful. It's not even in their brain. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> the faithful is not even in their brain. Why? I don't know, but that's why they never That's why they never leave their wife, like even when their wife gets really fat and shit, is because they know they're going to cheat. Oh. Uh, yeah. I, 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 what'd you say? Like, white people get divorced. The wife cheats back. Say what? Say it, Nyla. But the wife would cheat back, though. Like, cheating, oh, yeah, they'll cheating both is cheat. like regular yeah. in their culture. It's not yeah. like a... It's really? Like, yeah. It's like as long as they stay married, the marriage is what's loyal. The family. They're about the family, but bro. But cheating is like... You're Puerto Rican. No. Who are you? Nicaraguan. That's Nicaraguan. And oh, that's you, something I don't even like saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Carolina Bermudez is Nicaraguan, too. Yo, I, I said broke people, though, only because like I feel like a lot of uh, brothers that are rich... You know, they're successful. I think 
it comes to a point in time where you realize you got too much to lose. You got too much to lose. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that you've become a, a specifically fifty percent. Yeah. So I think you're a lot more faithful. You know what I mean? Broke dudes, they got to fuck a lot of girls to feel better about themselves. That's true. And a lot of times, maybe those girls are providing certain things in their lives they don't have. Absolutely. And, they, and, and whatever woman they are with, they going to shit on because they can't possibly oh. believe that this woman likes them just for them. Because they don't like themselves. That's exactly Ooh, now what you're getting it deep. is. That's now all you're it getting is. Deep. So I That's... just think a lot of times it'd be the broke dudes who just don't know how to be faithful. Now, who do you think is better at picking up chicks? White hmm. guys or black guys? Picking up chicks? Lifting them off the ground. <laughs> picking up chicks. You mean physically lifting them? No. <laughs> Obviously, I mean getting laid. I've been out the game so long, bro. I don't know. Yo, what was your line? What was your go-to line? Why do you say niggas in a room full of white people, Nyla? What do you mean? There's one white person in this room. No, it's actually three. <laughs> Aren't you Latino? No. Oh, okay. That's kind of, that's not like well, I said white, three. White. I said you, Chris, and, uh, and Angelo. And Angelo's half. He's Egyptian. That's like the first that's blacks. Egyptian. Angelo is only half when he's around his mom. Wait, your mom is Egyptian? No, that's Joey. I know that's Angelo. Yes. Okay. He's got a black mom. I know he's black. Yeah. He's not black. We consider him. <laughs> He's half and half. If milk is labeled half and half, so is Angela. Okay? Your mom was a black president. It was Your Obama mom was a black, black president. president. Oh, because he's half white, too? Uh, yes, because he presented as a black man. But you're saying he presents as Caucasian. He presents as just miscellaneous. <laughs> like, I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> no, he's very, I don't even know. The, I mean. <laughs> he's, very, he's very miscellaneous. Miscellaneous. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> his, his shirt should say miscellaneous rainbow. Like, I don't see no melanin. He said melanin rainbow. So this is you trying to identify as black via the shirt. My, my shit is right here at the top. I know. I see what you're doing. Uh. But that is him trying to. <laughs> That's not melanin, bro. But he's trying to own his blackness like you've right. never been in Times Square with the Nation of Islam dudes or whatever like the, the light skin ones are always the most aggressive well Angelo whatever you own you can only own 50% okay <laughs> sounds good <laughs> right? that's the truth to the oh, matter oh dude so you get 20 acres and half a meal <laughs> <laughs> do you get sunburned that's a good question do you? yeah I do you say that with pride no. that's when you know somebody <laughs> trying to be black as fuck for I guess I do I get sunburned I I do. I don't get so what? Sunburn. What I makes someone sunburn. black? Am I black? No. no. Okay. What? <laughs> I'm just asking, guys. No. If he's not black, and maybe anybody could be black. I'm not saying he, he's not. He's he's fifty percent. He's half. What percent is Sean King? That's a good question. Half, I guess. Fifty percent. He's you're fifty percent black. Yes. Yes. Who's blacker though? Is, would it be would I be blacker if my dad was black? Yes. How though? Because you are what your father is. But I, I, I lived in it was birthed out of a black womb, a black queen. Yeah. Yo, that is true. I, I don't like how you use the word queen just now. You know what I'm saying? You use the word queen. It sounds like pandering just now. You know what I mean? I don't like the way you just threw the queen out there. Okay, but you're correct. Yeah, you know what I mean? Crazy. But I was always taught you are what your father is. Because the father's the dominant gene. No, that's, that's a that's a Muslim true. thing. That's a Muslim thing? I yeah. thought it was a science thing. No, true. Jews are you are what your mom uh, is, and then uh, Muslims are you are what your I dad is. I thought science was you are what your father is. Your father is the dominant gene. What part of science? I don't fucking know. What part know? of fucking science? The one we science? learned in elementary school. I need to know what part of science. They're like, you're your dad. Yes. What about women? Are Google they it. their dad? Yes. Yo, by the way, Billy D. Williams, right? Yeah, he's gay now, right? No, he's not. And now, see, let's talk that? about that. That's the problem. Billy D. Williams was having a conversation. Time for all this shit. Billy D. Williams, all Billy D. Williams said was he 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 is in touch with his feminine feelings mm. and his male feelings, right? But he said I'm gender something, right? He did not say that. He, no, he said I'm non-gender. I'm gender he fluid. He never said that. Did you read the article? He never said that. I read the headline. First of all, he's 82 years old. He don't know what the fuck gender fluid is. He thinks gender fluid is sperm. Okay, he's 80 fucking two. That's some shit y'all just made up in the past five years. He has no idea what the fuck gender fluid so is. So he said he's in touch with his feminine side. His feminine side and his male side. And he said that he all, he uses uh, both pronouns sometimes. He refers himself as he or he refers himself as she. That's now, gender fluid. By the way, I find myself doing that with God. I don't say he. I try to say just God. Or sometimes I even say she. I be like he or she when it comes to the creator. Because think about it. If God created every single living thing on this planet, then God yeah. has to be a little bit of everything, right? And if you just think about how life is made, technically, we are half woman, 
half man. You can create you have to have both attributes in, yeah, in, but you can in create us. something without being it. Like you can build a house, doesn't mean you're part house. But you have to have h- half of your mother's attributes. <laughs> you have to. You don't think you have any of your mother's attributes whatsoever? I so. think I do. I have so I have many. But Everybody, I don't. I don't it, think that makes me female. No, I didn't say it makes you totally female, but it goes back to what I be talking about with the sacred masculine and divine feminine. We yeah. are made by both man and woman. Taylor has her daddy and her mother in her. You have your daddy and your mother in her. I have my daddy and my mother in her. You have to have both. Like, it's impossible not to. Of course you do. But he's saying he identifies with the female part and refers to himself as a woman at times. He said he You would never do that. You would never be like, girl, chill. I've definitely said I'm a bad bitch. <laughs> what? I have yes. definitely referred to myself as a bad bitch. Really? <laughs> so yes. are you gender fluid? Are I'm you nigga coming fluid. out? <laughs> I, I reserve the right to be nigga fluid, and I want to come out as nigga fluid today on this podcast. So you, no matter are, what you see me doing, yeah. I don't care if you see me in Goose Creek, South Carolina, with Senator Kamala Harris mm. doing mental health initiatives. Uh. I don't care if you see me doing mental health initiatives with Michelle Williams and and uh, Marianne Williamson. Uh. Regardless of what you see, Leonard McKelvey doing what? I'm nigga fluid. Damn, bro, yes, that nigga is always there. Now, am I nilla fluid? <laughs> I think I might be Nilla Fluid. You bro. might be Nilla Fluid. I think I'm Nilla Fluid. I just did. B- Billy D never said that was the wild thing to me. Yeah. He never said I'm gender fluid. Say an hour ago. What did he say? Come here, Chris. Get on the mic. He got to get up because his lime's already. <laughs> I, I just want to say the producer closest to the mic should have had that information. Thank oh, you. Chris, coming for your job, Taylor. Chris coming for he your says, fucking job. What the hell job. is gender fluid? Yo, repeat it again, Chris. Repeat it fucking again. Repeat what Billy D. Williams said again. What did Lando from Star Wars say? What did he say, Chris? What the hell is gender fluid? He's 82. He has no fucking idea what that shit is. I just told y'all that. Why don't we use common sense? What the hell is gender fluid? That's a whole new term. But what I was talking about was men getting in touch with their softer side of themselves. That's it, bro. I hate. This era that we live in, you know why? Because I still have common sense. And I'm a logical person. But we live in an era where everything is so illogical and people just be making up shit. When as soon as I saw that headline, first thing I thought to myself was, Billy D. Williams is 82 years old. He has no idea what gender fluid is. Let mm. me go read what he actually said. Oh, I wow. read the article. Not yeah. once did he say anything about gender fluidity. Yeah. Not once. Yeah. Not one fucking time. Yeah. It's a new term that y'all made up in the past five years. Why would Lando from Star Wars know this? He wouldn't. Even in a galaxy far, far I was away. About to say there was no gender fluidity. Because you're dealing with aliens and all kind of other shit. I don't have time to worry about gender. And I don't have time to worry about that kind of shit, yo. God bless uh, Billy D. Williams for fucking saying this shit. And what he said is absolutely right. Is what I've been trying to tell y'all on the podcast. For the past couple of months now. Yeah. Because this is what I've been talking to my spiritual counselor about, my spiritual Who's advisor. Who's your spiritual advisor? Her name is Yadi, Salute to Yadi. What does she do? How'd you meet her? What, I met what her is... through Angela Rye. Okay. And, and what Angela is... She's like a, um, she's a healer. Mm-hmm. She's like a a, a, a a therapist who gets to the root of things via a spiritual level. So she's outside of your normal therapist. Yes. I go to my regular therapist. Fridays at 3 o'clock, and then I talk to Yachty every night at 9 p.m. Wednesday nights at 9 p.m. But this whole conversation about the sacred masculine and divine feminine is just about traits. It's just about attributes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It don't have nothing to do with what you're sexually attracted to. None of that. Yeah. It just has to do with just uh, women have certain attributes, certain, uh, I, 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 uh, what's the word? Hold on. Traits, certain attributes, certain traits, and men have certain attributes and certain traits. And you have to have a balance of both in order to be a whole human. Right. Which would only make sense because if you're raised in a house with a father and a mother, you should be getting the best of both of those worlds to make you the best human being that you could possibly fucking be. It's Fair. simple. If you got too much of your father, it's probably not a good thing. If right. you got too much of your mom, that's probably not a good thing. You just got to have a healthy balance of motherfucking both. Mm. Simple as that. So I don't understand why people get upset when they hear that. Like, oh, I ain't got no, I don't have no, no feminine inside of me, nothing feminine about me. Like, mm-hmm. it actually is. What? What's the feminine side? Just feel his traits. You're fe- like, I sleep feminine. What do you mean? 
Explain. I like being little spoon. I, I sleep in a jackknife position. So I have one leg straight down and the other one like up. Sometimes I'll put a pillow between my legs. Okay. What? Well, if I laid that way around my boys, they would be like, why are you laying like that? How do you lay? How do I lay as a straight man? You don't lay because you're a man. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would you just lay around? Niggas like always that? talk about how straight they are to lay nut. <laughs> Don't nothing make you feel like you ain't got no. no control. Like you feel like a straight bitch when you're getting that nut out. Is that my divine feminine? <laughs> yes. you know, I do have divine feminine. When I when I nut and I go like this. Uh. That moaning, bro. Uh. Uh. Nigga, oh, moaning like makes that? the sex I better. I am a moaner. Wait, how do you moan in bed? I'm a moaner. I'm a talker. I am an encouraging human being. I am like, yes, baby. How do you talk do that while thing you're now. eating pussy? Not when I'm eating pussy. Oh, okay. When I'm getting yeah, yeah. things done to me, I am like, yes, baby. Do that, baby. Don't nobody do that like you, baby. I mean, you should, though. Do what? You should don't hum know. or something don't like that when you're do that eating like you. I should hum? Or do something like, yeah, talk or something like that when you're... How the fuck can you talk and eat pussy, Taylor? When I talk about hum or something like that... Well, this just tastes Taylor, delicious. This is what you do, Taylor. <laughs> Taylor. Wow. Taylor, Taylor, put your finger on your tongue. All right? Put your finger on your tongue. This is your niece you're talking Put your finger to. on your tongue. I know. It's my... Put your finger on your tongue. Now, try to talk. I'm not talking about talking then. I'm just saying, like, do, like, make a sound, though, with your mouth, though, while you're eating. I do the Lion King shit. That's not like You should bite off some labia like that, dude. That's a dangerous thing. Never mind. You said do the alphabet. You said say the alphabet. That's some white shit, motherfucker. Let me see. Let me see. White ass motherfucker. So, as you eating pussy, you do the alphabet? Yeah, you say it. Let me see. L, B, G, T. What? Yeah. <laughs> told me to do the alphabet. Yeah, what's, the, what, what, what's wrong with y'all? This is why nobody likes to talk to people. Yo, me, LGBT. <laughs> you told me to do the fucking alphabet. Listen, today Stop is crying. also Hove's birthday. Well, the podcast will be out the day after, but today. Shout to Hove, man. Made Jay-Z it. is 50 years old. Wow. Beautiful. Age is a blessing. Don't let anybody tell you different. Um, when it comes to like, you know, things that you should be trying to stack, right. you should be trying to stack as many years as motherfucking possible. Facts. You know what I mean? Because if you look at, you know, just the way things go, especially sometimes in the hip hop community, Biggie ain't get the little be 50. How many black shirts this guy gonna wear, bro? My, yo, yo, stop, yo, yo, hold on, yo. Hold on, we gonna get son. back to you and when Yo, you disrespectful God, now. Son. You're a pandering ass motherfucker, you should he run for really president. He is, bro. Pac didn't get to live to 50. Bro, he Nipsey had a melanin, get to what is it called? Melanin rainbow shirt. He no, we, took, don't, we gotta come back then, because we gotta spend oh some time. We gotta give him a, we, you gotta bro. get some bars, because I can't believe you. You spent one Thanksgiving with your mom, and now all of a sudden you wanna be black as fucking possible. Come on, bro. <laughs> all I'm simply saying is happy born day to Hove. Uh, 50 years old is a blessing for any man to get to and I just you know Jay Z raised the generation if he's not number one on your list even if you're being objective you know uh, you're not being objective if Jay Z is not the number one greatest hip hop artist of all time and he's gotta be in the top 10 of greatest artists of all time yeah why not even if because if you're just talking about talent wise but just stats wise this guy's got more number one records than Elvis you yeah, want to know more fun facts about him? You said what? You want to know fun facts about him? Sure. Fun facts. You got fun facts about Jay? Yeah. Okay, let's hear it, Miss Producer. Um, so Jay Z lived in London during the 1980s. I don't know if that's true. Um, they said Michael Jackson secretly sang on Jay Z's hit single "Girls, Girls, Girls." I've heard that. I don't know if that's true. Is um, Jay Z. Well, we all know that Jay Z's father left him. Um, we don't know if that's true. We got to hit both sides. <laughs> Okay, Reasonable Doubt was originally called Hair to the Throne. We don't know if that's true either. I don't know how you can call these fun facts. I haven't heard one factual thing. I, there's nothing that you can confirm with a fact. She also said hair to the throne. <laughs> hair to the throne. So, <laughs> so he waited till... So he, he waited... He wait, no, no, you keep that. So Jay-Z waited till he was 48 years old to grow out hair. And now he's... The, that he, that's what you're saying? Come on. He didn't have no hair back then, Taylor. Wait, what? 
Guys, while we're, oh, while we're talking no about hair. hair, the best way to prevent more hair loss is to do something about what you still have some. Thankfully, there's 4 the one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. You know me. I got a great head of hair. Check it out right now. Ed didn't get that close up. Got him. You know how I do it? Finasteride. That's the active ingredient in hymns, okay? It's going to keep your hair looking luxurious, looking fresh. You can get the uh, you can get it from licensed physicians and FDA approved products that are going to treat that hair loss that you have. No snake oil pills, nothing. All right, just answer a few quick questions and a doctor will review. And if they determine it's right for you, they can prescribe you medication to be shipped directly to your door. All right, you go to uh, today, right now. Do it right now if you want. Free online visit. Go to forhims, F O R H I M S dot com slash B I. Forhims dot com slash B I. Prescription products are subject to doctor approval and require an online consultation with a physician who will determine if a prescription is appropriate. See that website for details. This code costs hundreds of dollars if a person uh, went to the doctor's office or a pharmacy, but it doesn't here. Remember, that's forhims.com slash B I. Okay, back to you. Lulu, and, Lulu, uh, Lulu just texted me and said, I mean, seriously, we would have we would have made beautiful babies together. <laughs> I had fun trying with the emoji with the tongue out. Joking, no disrespect to his girl. Guys, how you gonna say nut in me? No disrespect to your girl though. <laughs> girls are wild, right? Yo, girls are wild out here. <laughs> I want you to come inside of me I want and you produce to fuck a me child raw <laughs> Yo, and potentially have babies, but no disrespect. No to disrespect. Your girl. You know no. what I'm saying? <laughs> totally respect. Now, to this pandering motherfucking Angelo, I saw you on Instagram Angelo, over the holidays Angelo, Angelo. trying to dance with your black mom. You have no rhythm, she does. Um, <laughs> Which lets me know that you have more of your white father in Do you, you. think he looks white to you? I think he looks black. I think he looks suspicious. <laughs> I think that that shirt he's wearing is perfect. Black-ish. That's crazy. Okay? So, yes. He, Yo, by the way, he did take off a shirt that said Melanin Rainbow. He had Melanin Rainbow. And had a black-ish shirt under Now he's a black-ish shirt under What's What up, is bro? under that? What's up? You running for president? <laughs> I need to see. Is this a black what? fist tattooed on your chest? Yeah. You running for president? What you going to do? You going to give 100 billion to HBCUs? What you doing, bro? Not right now. What? What's I up? Like we know we did the vlog for um, we did the blackish panel and I saw the shirt so I had to get it. That's it. Don't blame this on me. <laughs> I've never encouraged you to be black. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've never encouraged you to be black. I've yeah. encouraged you to do be you who feel and what like, you are. Do you feel like if you wear these black themed clothes, then P it will trigger people to go, oh, he must be black? No, I'm being serious. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like um you know, wearing black stuff is the culture. It's, it's moving the culture. So I don't want to wear any I don't think anything white's popping. Oh, so it's trendy to you. Oh, uh, yeah, it is. It's not a bad thing. See, when you're half and half, Whoa. you can do that. When you're half Whoa. and half, you can do that. Why, that's why, no, I'm proud to be black because it's trendy. What? what? Or is it vice versa? I don't, I don't know what the fuck you talking about. <laughs> I'm proud to be black, period. Because I ain't got no lie. choice. But you have a choice, <laughs> have a choice. Angelo. I'm black, I'm black. And I'm proud to be black. And I'm what, white and I'm... What does your I'm, father feel I'm about white. that? How does your father feel about that? How does your father feel about that? <laughs> Seriously. How does your father feel about that? About what? He, he did it. It's his fault. But he's white. So how, right. so if you say to him, I'm proud to be black, that's your dad. He's a white man. He's like, yo, what's up with me, bro? Like, I'm going to be honest with you, Angelo. You ain't white anymore, bro. I don't feel like it. It's over. You think just because you can wear a Tiger Woods hat, you can claim 10 different races? <laughs> yeah, that's what it is, bro. That's what it is. Is your dad still alive? Yeah, yeah. Do you talk to him? Of course. What did he say to you last week? Well, I was well, for Thanksgiving. <clears throat> you would never go to your white father's no, house. No, I for definitely didn't. I didn't even, you know, I stayed. I said, "What's up?" I didn't eat his food or nothing. I don't Why not? He cooked. Well, he he has a like a I guess a girlfriend, a little girlfriend. That I don't really fuck with a little girlfriend. <laughs> you be around your black mama. <laughs> How your daddy with his little girlfriend? You went to your daddy house with his little girlfriend for Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You stopped by your daddy house with his little girlfriend. <laughs> Yeah, I chill with my black. Did you take a picture of daddy's little girlfriend? <laughs> For real, no, nah, yeah. So you black or white? I'm black, man. And is your dad's little girlfriend your dad's white or girlfriend. black? Oh, no, she's Puerto Rican. Wow. So he couldn't go all the way back. <laughs> That's a bad. He's like slowly he getting a little, there. Bit of, a little bit of spice. Still. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. But do you feel conflicted about your race? Yeah, Serious I'm question. Um, no, I used to. I went to like where I went to high school was all white. Like I was the darkest dude to graduate in my class. Right. Like real rap, and then you know, come on, bro, real rap. 
<laughs> Who the fuck says that? Stop. You're trying too hard. No, no, not... Jesus Christ. Panda, panda, panda. My God. <laughs> Real rap. Is okay. it working? No. <laughs> <laughs> nice little Hillary callback. I like that. Continue. <laughs> this fucking guy. <laughs> okay, go on. What are we talking about? We're talking about you and oh, and, and your identity, and it, it is a, probably a tricky thing yeah, because I mean, I, I white up... people don't see you as white, and black people, some might not see you as black, right. so who you are in this middle ground, I'm curious about it. No, I mean- Maybe you're making a decision. You're leaning into black because you're like, I'm going to choose my identity. I'm no, not going to let strangers do it you. for me. It's, um, you know, I grew up- Is I'm not going to hold you kind of like real rap? He's still pandering, bro. I I know you're not going to hold him because you don't like cuddling. I don't like spoon. Yo, no, I just, I grew for up, real though, word is bond, go. I grew, <laughs> <laughs> I grew up around white people. Like the only time I was, I was around black people was when I went to church and um, when I was only around my own mom's, side, mom's side of the family. Right. And that was not that often because they lived so far upstate, Connecticut and shit. So right. I was, uh, stayed around my dad's family a lot. So I guess after I graduated, I started, um, you know, being introduced to the black culture a lot more. And yeah. you think it's cooler? Um. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's, it is. It's cooler. Right. I think and it's for your generation, so cool. Yeah. Yes, and for your generation, hip hop is the culture. You know right. what I mean? I mean, hip hop is the origins of hip hop is black, but hip hop is the dominant culture throughout the world. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you have genetic access to the entitlement to that yeah, culture. You know, I've always, you know, but let's be clear: genetic access don't give you that. Don't give you access to the culture because there's a lot of people who are black who don't have any of that hip hop. In them at all. They don't have the soul. They don't have none of the soul. But they yes. could have wanted to without, you know, any question. But um, I always liked hip hop. What do you I, mean? What do you mean by that, Angela? You talking about like like black like black folks that don't really listen to hip hop? Yeah, you know, it's not that big of a deal, anyways. But no, yes, it, yes, it is. I want to hear you fuck you, keep digging a bigger hole for yourself. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had something. But I did. <laughs> um, no, what I was going to say was um. I I've always liked hip hop, but I never really was able to express myself. Like when I went to high school, everybody wore prep like preppy, you know, yeah. khakis and stuff like that. And I always like hip hop. I always wore fitted hats, and I got made fun of. But hip hop does the preppy shit too, though. You think about like that, boys that when I was in high school, like 2000, 2010 and shit. That oh was the shit, two thousand ten was the fucking yeah, was beyond preppy and for black people. Twenty eight, twenty seven. 2010? Yeah. No, stop. Oh, that was like, yeah, That's the Kanye, Kanye West, era. But, but where'd you go to school? I went to Rye High School. Where is that? In Westchester. Westchester's like 10 years behind. Really? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, I, and I even feel. like Connecticut a little bit too sometimes. You it's could, like you a little bit the boys the men. Boys men used to wear the sweater vest with the ties and the short pants. I didn't like that. I, I dressed, I was more like the baggy style. Yeah, 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 school. yeah. And it was just, I just, I always stood out like that. Right. And now I feel like I, you know, I get to fit in more. So, what would you say to young kids that uh, share your identity issues? Listen I, to Logic. Nah, nah, I don't listen to Logic. <laughs> Drake, 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 Drake. Drake doesn't explore his identity issues. I think Drake does yeah, a does. great job. There's a whole song called um, "You and the Six where he says, "Uh, used to get you used to get made fun of for being black, and now you're here, and now you're not black enough." Oh, okay. I don't listen <laughs> to Drake like that. I'm, not, I'm gonna take your word and for do it. Do you feel? Do you relate to that? <laughs> Absolutely. Right. All right. I like seeing Drake do the hell yeah fucking right video. Right. That was, that was a black mix for yeah, me. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah, yeah. Like that was him embracing both sides. That's what Tiffany did last night at her birthday party. She embraced both sides of her heritage. Right. I thought that shit that's is exactly dope. What it, that's exactly how you could explain it. I, I embrace both sides. And maybe you found the ability to embrace the black side a little bit easier now that you're older and you can put yourself in environments where that culture thrives. Exactly. Whereas when you were younger, you were kind of forced into this in one environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, how do you feel about I think people- you're just picking the bigger Trump card bro Ooh. like meaning like if you're black and Jewish you would want to rep both of those wait are you Jewish too no no he's not uh, but I'm saying yeah, if yeah. you're black and Jewish you would want to rep both of those because both of those cultures are popping right you're black and white you're looking around you're like ah oh, there's all this white supremacy and this racism I don't really want to claim this white shit you know yeah. what I mean yeah, yeah, but that's not that's not cool to rep anyway. Why would I want to do that? That's hate. That's hate. You say what? Excuse me. That's hate. Why would I want to rep white, that anyway? Oh, wait, white wait, supremacy wait. is yeah, hate. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what about yeah, like yeah. white but not supremacy? You know, just like regular old it's white. white. Uh, I mean, mean, I'm Italian, so I could rep it, 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 being Italian. Italian sick. Italian? Where do you think black people got all their cool shit from? Italians. Word. Not all of it, but there was a period. Come on, yo, stop acting <laughs> no, no, like no, black no, people no, don't no, fuck no, with no, Italian no. culture. No, yo. There was a 
there was stop a period. Acting. There, there, stop <laughs> acting. You no. want to talk about Jay Z? Nah, bring up that reasonable Taylor. doubt album. The, bring up that know, reasonable Andrew, doubt. Andrew is right. right. There was a moment Come when on, black Andrew. rappers, <clears throat> especially in Show New York, respect. were obsessed with Italian mafia culture. Please, it's Show a some fact. Respect. It's a fact. It was all <laughs> Biggie J. No, it was come here, fashion, the, culture, vocabulary. Wu Tang was calling moved. themselves the Wu Gambinos. Boom. They all had all of these different Italian oh, nicknames. The Teflon Don. The Gross. Teflon Don. Come on, yo. Biggie, Biggie, Biggie Small. Like all of them, Junior Mafia. Like they all embraced Junior the Italian mafia, yeah. mafia culture. Because, because at the moment, it was super cool. They had all these great movies about it. It was super influential. It wasn't on, only you got, you got rappers named Capone Facts. and Gotti. Irv, you know what Irv I mean? Gotti, like, yeah. like, yes, all of this, yes, that, sense, yeah, that is a fact. There was a period. Scarface. Scarface. Well, no, there, no, Scarface is Cuban. But really? Al, Al Capone was also referred yeah. to as Scarface, but Scarface that we know from the movie, Tony Montana, is But there was a Capone, Cuban, though. But there was Al Capone. Yeah. So, therefore, yeah, yeah. there was a period in time where black people absolutely, positively uh, were, in, were loving Italian mafioso culture. That is a fact. But not just black people. Everybody was into it. Irish people yeah. were into it. White people that aren't Italian were into it because it was fucking romanticized and cool in the same way where we're all so indulgent in like modern black culture right now, right? I think what happens is we're so drawn to cool it doesn't matter who's doing the cool, we're going to try to replicate it. Yeah, yeah, And everybody's yeah, yeah, going to yeah. have their time to shine. You know, like back in the day, I bet with Frank Sinatra and those guys, Bro, everybody wanted to beat him. Bro, cowboys. Shit, cowboys. You know, the time in America where everybody wanted to be a cowboy until Brokeback Mountain came out. <laughs> Yo, that's a fact. Yeah, it, might, yeah, it might have stopped a little before that, but... <laughs> no, I think it was Brokeback Mountain. I think Brokeback Mountain, when the Cowboys stopped winning Super Bowls, motherfuckers like, man, fuck this Cowboy shit, bro. It might be true. I'm serious. It might be true. Except for in Texas. They do that shit. Oh, they love it. And, you know, I like that people love it regardless if, if other people think it's cool. I that's like when you know what, it's true to them. Yeah, you're not hopping on trends. When it's true to them, you're not hopping on trends. Hmm. Now, Angelo, back away from the microphone, you trendy black boy. <laughs> um... Imagine I, think, I said that. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I could call him a cracker though, right? Crack. <laughs> crack. I can call him crack. Crack half. He's crack. Uh, he's not an er. He's not the er. I nah, can't er him. Oh, he is the er because the er is for nigger. Uh, <laughs> so he's cracker. <laughs> Yes, Angelo was a crack earth. <laughs> just got hot in here, dude. I don't know. Just got a little hot in here, guys. <laughs> no, either way you spin it, he's either way. He could be a crack er or a, a nigger. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> crack ish. You crack are crack ish. Crack -ish. You're crack ish. You're crack ish. Bro, I like it. All right. That's all we have for you today, guys, because uh, we got shit to do. Hey man, we love y'all. We love y'all. Uh, damn, we we got to talk about Kamala dropping out the race. Though. Oh yeah, yeah, let's talk. Let's we got to talk about Kamala dropping out the race. And, and you have inside uh, information. It seems I don't want to even say inside no, information. Inside. Let me say this: you are. Um, I don't know if the word "surprisingly" is the right word, but like whenever we're having group text discussions, you seem incredibly informed about the election in a way you were not. In the previous election, previous like you are, election, you are um, into the minutia of this one. Well, here's the thing: when I, when I the first time I ever voted was 2008 right. for President Barack Obama. Didn't vote for any other reason other than he was black and Jeezy's song was fire. Same. My president is black. My Lambo's blue. I didn't. I didn't like. Oh, black man got a chance to win. Yeah. And he seemed black. Black. Like. Whoa. Even though he was blackish, you know what I mean. But we didn't. We didn't. But no, he just he played basketball, right. like rap music. Got a beautiful wife, black wife. Wife was black. Two black daughters. Shit. Did a little weed in high school. Shit. I'm fucking with, he smoked cigarettes. I fuck with Barack or Hussein Obama. Mm. Right? So I voted for Barack. Uh, 2016, um, I got, I started to get a, a little bit more informed because I didn't know who I wanted to vote for. So I was looking at both sides. I was looking at Republicans. Remember, I had discussions about Marco Rubio and different people. Yeah. I was also looking at all of the Democrats. So I started to get a little bit more informed about their actual policies yeah. and legislations they wanted to introduce and things of that nature. Um, and that's just something that has just grown. Like, you know, it's just something I've been educating, on my, educating myself on since then. And I guess, you know, uh, interviewing all these presidential candidates Starting back in 2016. You kind of got to know. You got to know what the what fuck's going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, I am a little, I'm, I'm a lot more informed than I was. Right. I didn't give a fuck about politics. I was on my Jay-Z shit. Uh, government, fuck government. We politic ourselves. Right. You know? But, 
Yes, I'm, I'm all in. Okay, so now mm-hmm. Kamala drops out. Kamala she dropped out. drops out. What is the reason why she dropped out? You, we were talking about the group text. No money. No money. So being no money means that you weren't garnering the support that you needed. You know? And you need money to run a campaign because you need to promote the campaign. You need to do online advertising. You need to yeah, do TV ads. Absolutely. You need to pay staff, all that kind of stuff. And when people stop donating... You effectively have to shut down your campaign, even if you still want to run, just because you don't have the money to run it. And Senator Harris's case is very unique because she, uh, a super PAC was just giving her a million dollars to run ads in Iowa. Right. You know, Iowa was one of the early primary states, so you need Iowa. Right. And she had qualified for the December debate. Right. And the December debate is the 19th. <clears throat> what is this? What are we playing? No. So, yeah. why... Why I don't see why they couldn't hold off to the 19th on a shoestring budget just for her to be in the the last debate, give one last hurrah. I yeah. I I personally I think um I don't think Senator Harris ever got a fair shot. I think that everything is up for question. Um you know you, yes you should be able to question her record as a prosecutor. Right. Um I thought that she should have leaned in to being a prosecutor very early on. You I know agree. I think that she should have been out here saying. Uh, what she initially did, eventually did, you know, saying Donald Trump is a criminal. I'm a prosecutor. I'm going to lock his ass up. You know what I mean? I don't think it's anything wrong with being a prosecutor. Like when you're a prosecutor, people are going to go to jail under your watch. You're going to get yeah. people locked up. Black That's people, white people. Yeah. I, guar- I guarantee you, if you did the percentage of White people, the black people that she locked up. Right. I'm sure it was more white people. That's because that's just, that's more, it's more white people in the world, in the population, in America. Right, but it's about percentage compared to the population. It's not about total. And listen, I don't know how many people, black people she locked up. Right. I just know that as a prosecutor, it's very wild to act like she's not going to lock up any black and brown people. You know what I'm saying? Plus, right. we live in this era where it was so much misinformation that went out there. Like, immediately, Kamala's a cop. Kamala locked up uh, 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 an abnormal amount of people for marijuana, which which isn't true. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right. of these things that they just threw out there, which I was confused by because the reason I gravitated towards Kamala to begin with was because I was looking at the things that she was doing as far as criminal justice reform, and a lot of it was very progressive. Like, she's been doing the Back on Track program for two, since 2005, and right. that helps people who, uh, you know, are coming out of jail to get on their feet. You know what I mean? So she does a lot of things to either keep people out of jail or help people once they get out of jail. Right. But that wasn't the narrative that but the spread through social media. The narrative stuck. Tulsi Gabbard had, like, a really, a couple good digs on her, and it, and it seemed like those went viral. And I think those went viral because— That was blown out of proportion, too, though. Right, right, right. It, but, and, and, I, and I want you to explain why. It goes back why. to the weed thing on Breakfast Club. No, no, I want you to explain why. Mm-hmm. But I think what also happens is sometimes, like, when somebody says something that you already feel— you share it more. Confirmation bias. Yes, confirmation bias. And mm-hmm. I think that's what happens. Like, there was this sentiment about Kamala, and then when somebody confirmed it with yes. facts, it was like, ah, finally, you said what I've been thinking. Now, you said on The Breakfast Club that, that these things were- Well, everybody was calling her a hypocrite because she said that she smoked weed in college. Right. And people were like, well, if you smoke weed in college, well, why, why do you people go to people jail up? Yeah. for weed? Because that's the law. She would have went to jail in college too. Yeah. She got caught. I think <laughs> I, I I agree though. I would have liked her to go uh when they're like, you put all these black people in jail. And it's like I put people who break the law in jail. That's my she job. She said that though. Really? She literally said, You expect me not to put murderers and rapists and 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 uh drug dealers in jail? Like, I, I don't know. All I'm saying is I think it's sad that she's not in the race no more. Yeah. Reason I think it's sad that she's not in the race no more because three and a half years after having our first black president, we have no black people. On that stage. Right. You know what I'm saying? There will be no black people on the next debate stage. Right. And if you're the Democratic Party and you're supposed to be the party of the people, it don't look like that right now. You know what I mean? I mean, it's still got diversity because you have Elizabeth Warren there. She's a woman, Native American. You have Mayor Pete, who's a gay man. But I'm talking about for me as a black man, Book is not making the, he hasn't made the next debate stage. What no. about Deval Patrick? I don't know where Deval Patrick comes in at. He's like the guy in the Royal Rumble that you didn't know was in the Royal Rumble. And he just comes in. He's like the second to the last guy that comes in. He's got all yeah. the energy. But I don't, I don't, I haven't seen him it make seems, any impact other than when he announced. It's, uh, this is my suspicion. My suspicion is that the Biden campaign said to Kamala, hey, stop wasting money on your campaign. You're going to be my VP save the money, put it in a war chest, and then we can use it when we're actually running for president. It could be that, or it could be, yo, I'm not going to ruin, like, same difference, I'm not going to ruin any future political aspirations by being in this race 
and continuing to let all these false narratives, you know, go out. These false narratives Ooh. have already kind of killed my campaign. Yeah. I'm still Senator in California till 2022. Very important. I may want to run. I'm probably going to run again for Senator in California. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So it's just like I'm not going to let anything damage my future political aspirations. That's smart. Because uh, she, she can always yeah. come back to the president. She's only yeah. 55. Yeah, that's yeah, that's something people don't realize is like a lot of these people are not running for president. They're using this as a platform to run for something else. Like, yeah. I don't know if Mayor Pete really believes he can be president, but you know what he will be? Senator. Senator of yeah. Indiana. Our congressman, right? absolutely. Same thing, right? And th and that could go for Kamala. Kamala could be governor of California. Who knows? I don't know if that's I, a more powerful position than senator. I don't, I don't know what the— I'm not sure. I mean, she could be attorney general. But you know what I'm saying. She, could be, she could be vice president. Right? She could be attorney general. So, so you are <clears throat> auditioning for—it's like when you go audition for a play or something like that. You might get a, a role, but not the one that you wanted. Yeah. Specifically. So, I, yeah. I like Senator Harris. Um, so what is it, I, Biden? I, I mean, are, are they just giving up? Do you think they're just giving up? Because if Biden is the nominee, they're giving up. If if Sanders is Bernie Sanders is the nominee, I think there's a chance, and you just gotta let Sanders fucking go. It, yeah, I think it really depends who the VP is. Like like like, there's no white man that can run for president and 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 on the Democratic side and not have a very very diverse vice president. I'm I'm talking about a woman or a woman of color. Mm -hmm. Like you you almost have to have that, especially this crop of people. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, Joe ain't going to do it alone. Do you? Yes. Don't you think there's so much anti-Trump sentiment that people are just going to go, Bro, I don't think it's I'll a lot. vote for anybody who's not I Trump? I don't think it's a lot of anti-Trump sentiment. Really? I think the anti-Trump sentiment is some bullshit. It's a social media narrative. It can't possibly be anti-Trump sentiment because people actually voted for Trump. And Trump still has supporters now. Mm -hmm. And he has people that come to his defense now. Mm -hmm. And he's got a war chest that's out of this motherfucking world. And bread. none of the Republicans are saying he's wrong for what he's doing. They're actually defending him. So it can't be that much anti-Trump sentiment, bro. A lot of people voted for Trump just because they don't like Hillary. A lot, well, no. Nyla just said a lot of people voted for Trump because they don't like Hillary. No, a lot of people didn't vote, period. Because they don't, they don't like, like Hillary. Hillary which like essentially Trump. Yeah. helped Trump. Yes. Yeah. Either way, I'm sad that Senator Harris is no longer uh, in the race. Uh, I saw Cory Booker say it's more billionaires than than black people in the, in the next debate, and that's right. the truth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just, I, I don't know. I just think it's tough, bro. Yeah. It's tough. Money is the name of the game, especially and in so, politics. And social media don't help. And money is the name of the game, period, bro. Yeah, those billionaires are literally running to protect their money. Bro, like they didn't. None of these billionaires got in the game until Elizabeth Warren was like, "We're gonna tax all the billionaires." They're like, ah, "All right, I got you. Let, let's put a stop to this shit." And by the way, the DNC, Tom Perez, and y'all, y'all got to really change the qualifications of what it takes to make these debate stages and all of this type of shit, man, because it's going to look really stupid. Tom Steyer is not polling anywhere. Oh, so you're He's saying not polling anywhere? The DNC. Has a corruption problem? We know that You're already. You're saying though. the DNC, the organization that ripped Bernie Sanders off Absolutely. for the last election, we know has that. a corruption problem? Yes. We They're had Tom scumbags. Perez. We had Tom Perez on the birth club. I pressed him about all of that. You Bro. know what I'm saying? So that's, yes. the, that's the thing that the there's a saying, and I'm, I'm going to get it wrong, so maybe I won't say exactly, but uh, who the fuck said it? Oh, no, Malcolm X. He said, uh, I believe it was Malcolm X. You a panderer. Um, <laughs> well, wait, till you, wait till you hear the saying. You might not think so. Tell me what Malcolm Jamal wanted to say. Uh, uh, he said, um, white women got the best pussy. No. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Malcolm Jamal wanted to say Malcolm that. Malcolm Jamal wanted to probably say that. <laughs> but uh, no, he said, um, uh, a Republican is uh, a wolf. He'll show you... Someone look this up. I got it. But I know exactly what you're You know the exact one, right? Mm -hmm. I don't even want to say it because I don't want to ruin it. But if I you, thought it was about Democrats. It mm -hmm. is. But he oh, okay, uses, okay. he says something about like, something instead of like a Republican is a wolf. When he shows his teeth, you know what the purpose of those teeth are. He goes, a Democrat is a fucking fish or something. I don't he fucking know. He is said, it? Michael Mack said, uh, we won't organize any black man to be a Democrat or a Republican because both of them have sold us out. Both of them have sold us out. Both parties have sold us out. Both parties are racist and the Democratic Party is more racist than the Republican Party. Say that again. 
He said both parties are racist and the Democratic Party is more racist than the Republican Party. Now, right. granted, it's very important to note that this was before of course, of course. the Civil Rights Act was established in 1964 under the leadership of Martin Luther King Jr. and the well-known racist uh, Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon so B. Johnson. racism in America was at an all-time high because that's what that's that's that dumb-ass logic that Kanye likes to use when it comes to Republicans yeah, yeah, and yeah. Democrats. But the ideologies of the parties were totally different. Of course, then. of course. I'm not holding... The ideologies of the parties back in the day to now, obviously, is a different standard and different care about civil rights. But the statement is interesting, even if you remove Democrat or, or but keep on going. The next thing is about the teeth. He says, I'm uh, um, you have it. What is it, Chris? I see. The Get on the microphone. Oh, one is a wolf. The other is a fox. One is a wolf. The other is a fox. The wolf shows you. Uh, yeah, yeah. The wolf shows your teeth and you're like, oh, fuck, I got to stay away from the wolf. But the fox no, the fox will come over. He'll be cute. You could like pet him, etc. But at the end of the day, he's gonna fucking eat you. That body didn't age well, bro. Son, I'm gonna tell you why that body didn't age well. Why? And the fuck is a fox ever eating a human? <laughs> fox don't eat humans. But they bite him. I've never been attacked by a fox. Fox run, run. Fox run. Well, take that up with Malcolm, bro. I don't know. Maybe it was different back then. <laughs> it might have been. Might have been a different breed of fox back it then. Been. I get. But the point that he's trying to make is. There's one group that is making it seem like they want everything to to empower you, et cetera, but they might not exactly want. Now, I'm not that I'm not saying the Democrats don't want. And I think that there are Democrats that truly do want to help black people and other minorities, et cetera. I think it might be Republicans that truly want to help, too. That's that. That's all I'm trying to say is just to assume because someone is Republican that they don't want to help you is unfair. Well, because you don't know what's in that person's heart. Yes, that's a fact. You really just don't. Mm hmm. You know, and, and we might find out that there are people that are Republican and they have donated tons of money to, uh, to you know, different, I don't know, charities, et cetera, that have the best interests of black people out there. Listen, um, this is Malcolm said, politically, the American Negro is nothing but a football and the white liberals control this mentally dead ball through tricks of tokenism, false promises of integration and civil rights. In this profitable game of deceiving and exploiting the political politician of the American Negro, those white liberals have the willing cooperation of the Negro civil rights leaders. These leaders sell out our people for just a few crumbs of token recognition and token gains. These leaders are satisfied with token victories and token progress because they themselves are nothing but token leaders. Listen. Now, this is a different time. It's We're a different not putting time. on this time, but having a healthy skepticism about everyone yes. and having a healthy optimism about everyone is good. If you find a Republican mayoral candidate that really wants to help your mm. city and seems like they want to help you with the things that you want to do, let's say in Monk's Corner, Carolina, uh, South Carolina. Why would not do it? Why would you not? You think I don't build with Republicans in you South should. Carolina? Salute to my guys, Tim Scott, Senator Tim Scott. You take me and Tim Scott. I'm doing something with Tim in February. See? You know what I mean? Like, there it is. When it comes to different things and I want to make phone calls and ask people about things and how to get involved in certain things, you think I'm not calling anything? I give a fuck if he's a Republican or a Democrat? Who can get shit done? <clears throat> That's all I care about. Mm -hmm. Listen, Lyndon B. Johnson was a well-known racist. Well, what he do? Martin Luther King Jr. got him to sign that bill, commit to the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act. I don't give a fuck personally. You know what I mean? I'm going to build with who can help me and mine. I'm Here, always about my interests. Here's the quote. Uh, it is, uh, once we do for self, then we will be able to solve our own problems. Well, that's, the, totally, that's about black jobs. No, no, I'm saying the white conservatives aren't friends of the Negro either, but they at least don't try to hide it. They are like wolves. They show their teeth in a snarl that keeps the Negro always aware of where he stands with them. But the white liberals are foxes who also show their teeth to the Negro. But they sly. But pretend that they are smiling. The white liberals are more dangerous than the conservatives. They lure the Negro, and as the Negro runs from the growling wolf, he flees into the open jaws of the smiling fox. One is the wolf, the other is the fox. No matter what, they'll both eat you. Listen, I love what he's saying, but I just have to see a fox eat a human in order for me to really commit <laughs> to that bar. I like. I get what he's saying. It'd take a while to eat a human. That's what I'm fox. saying, a yeah. fox? He should have chose something else. Come on! A swiper, no swiping. I've never seen a fox eat a human. I've seen him steal. Yeah. I got all night. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know. But I love, the, I love, I, I understand what Malcolm's saying, though. Yeah. But I just, you know, I need, I, when you say stuff like that, I'm thinking literally, like, you know. Yes. That's all. That's all. Healthy optimism, healthy more, skepticism. Oh. Have it. Oh, what? One, one more thing, though, before we get out of here. Go. I sent this in the group chat because you know I love to be right. What happened? Or not right, but just to have other people agree with some shit I might have said that people thought was crazy. I put this in the group chat. Um, 
Damn. Didn't I send it to y'all? No. I did send it to you, man. I think that's your gays only one. Hold on. <laughs> I don't have a gay only group chat. <laughs> that wouldn't be any fun. <laughs> you have to all be included. Hold on. I had it right here. Hold on. It was about the, uh, the dude on CNN saying that Trump's not leaving in 2020. If he, um, well, more of the story is the yeah, this dude on uh, CNN. I can't remember his name right now. He said that Trump's not leaving in 2020, but that's that's my whole thing. If Trump loses the election, right. I don't know why people think he's just going to leave the White House. He has William Barr, who's the head of the DOJ. He's got two Supreme Court justices that he appointed. His motherfucker has appointed over 160 something federal judges. Do you think that he's not going to challenge any win? by the Democratic Party and say that they cheated and they rigged the election and you think that William Barr is not going to side with him and run it up to the Supreme Court and you think the Supreme Court is not going to allow their guy to stay a little bit longer? You think I, it, it, I there's nothing we've seen that's been normal about this presidency. I hear what you're saying. I, I think it's... Um, Can you I, see Trump walking away normally, yeah. Andrew? No I, I mean, I don't think he'll lose this in uh, currently with the people that we have running on the Democratic side. I don't think he'll lose. I don't think he's going to lose either. Um, but that being said, like, if there's one thing America does not play around with, and that is people fucking with tradition. Like, you try to take our guns, motherfuckers will go crazy. A kid gets shot, shot up every single week, and people are still like, I ain't giving my gun away, right? We do not care about that shit. And one of those traditions is... You get two terms and you out. There's only one president that's taken more than two terms, right? That's FDR. He did three during World War II, if I'm not mistaken, right? But a lot uh, of that was sympathy, though. Why? Because he couldn't walk. Yep. Right. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> if Trump really wants it that bad, maybe he'll go the FDR route. But I, 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 I <laughs> he just start rolling around and shit. real talk. He might do it. He might do it. <laughs> These are the best wheels you've ever seen. I tell you the bearings on these wheels. I think I'm doing no, Bernie this, Sanders. This imp- no, no, no. Trump will be like, this impeachment has left me impaired. Okay? <laughs> so now I have to be in a wheelchair. I would like to leave the White House, but I can't. I need two more years for the two legs I lost. <laughs> I can't do Trump. I lost my Trump. It's just Bernie. Anyway, I, I love... Um, Trump. I love Trump. No, no. I, I just, I just, I love all the conspiracies about him not wanting to leave. I, just, I find it funny, but at the end of the day, it's like that's something you don't fuck with in America. America does not fuck with that shit. America might need that, bro. A, a America dictator? might need that. No, 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 no. America might need that to realize that country on? is bigger than party, that's, and they might need, they might finally need that to realize, whoa. This guy has been pulling the wool over our eyes for so motherfucking long. He really is everything that people say he wants to be. Yeah. This is the reason he cozies up to guys like Putin. And, the, you know, this is he wants to be that dictator, that ruler. And I think that might finally be the straw that breaks the motherfucking uh, Republicans back. And it will break them. Yes. That's something that we don't play with, man. That's I'm what telling every, you. Everybody would have to agree with that as a country, right? Like, whoa. Bro, we can't have this. Hey, bro, he would be out of here. That's a fact. Well, he would be out of here. 2020 is going to be fun, guys. <laughs> Some fireworks. <laughs> right? Now, as Some always, fireworks. if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, oh, you think we're Oh, I got one brilliant. thing that I want to promote. What? Okay. You know how I've been doing those fashion videos? Yes. Online for a while now, and uh, people have been asking me, like, yo, where can we get the clothing from the fashion videos? And we usually only do it on live shows, but... This weekend, three days only, we're doing fashion online. The number one. Y'all don't sell your merch online? No, never. Wow. It was only live shows you could access it. Okay. But for the first time, we're only doing three days, 72 hours, starting Friday, 2 p.m. Go to um, shop. Uh, no, fashion.shop. That's the website. F-A-S-H-U-N dot shop. Go get it. Um, you should put that in church announcements. I should have done that yeah, as well. Maybe early. we could put that earlier. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. So again, this is your opportunity. I know maybe I haven't done a show in your city. Maybe you've been watching the videos from overseas or something like that. Go grab them. 72 hours only. Go, go, go. It's fashion.shop. So thank you guys so much for uh, supporting that. 
That's right. Now, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Uh, this podcast has been brought to you by BetterHelp. Whatever struggles you are facing from depression to anxiety to trauma, grief, BetterHelp can connect you with a professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient. You can schedule secure video or phone sessions, as well as a chat and text with your therapist. And anything you share is completely confidential. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Our listeners even get 10% off your first month with the discount code IDIOTS. So why not get started? Simply go to betterhelp.com slash idiots and fill out a questionnaire to get matched with a counselor you'll love today.